Hey guys, welcome back to the Nomadic Fanatic Show. This video is kind of a filler video so I can relax a little bit and catch back up, but also a very highly requested video from my viewers uh, with some really helpful tips. So if you're looking to improve the quality of your YouTube videos without going to college or school or getting any kind of paid education, watch this video. I'm gonna try to keep it short and simple and you guys can use all of these tools to help make, make better YouTube videos. Also by popular demand, the don't be a tater hater shirt is now available to the public. You guys said you liked this idea. I hope to get it out there more. Uh, my haters love calling me tater like that's supposed to mean, it's supposed to make me upset or something. I love it. So I have embraced it completely here and it is available worldwide just like my last t-shirt sales and hoodies sales. Uh, it's drop shipping. Last time I had 100% customer satisfaction and shipping was perfect so there's a link below to bonfire you can select your color your size uh, the shirt or sweater or hoodie that you're interested in and then those will be shipped out as soon as the campaign ends so get yours now these are only available for a limited time i'm not going to stockpile these up so order them before they are no longer available Anyway, the purpose of this video is to help uh, some of you out there who have asked me, how do you create better YouTube videos for YouTube? And so I have five easy steps that you guys can take with you, write these down, practice them, and I promise you, your videos for YouTube will change drastically in quality. For the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to assume that you are using some kind of a small camera or action camera like an SJ4000 or a GoPro, or you're using your cell phone simply. Uh, this is just for beginners. I'm gonna dumb this down as much as possible just so we can see how quickly you can improve those videos. So for this recording, I am using my GoPro Hero 6. First one is this shot right here. It's a very common YouTube shot. You see this all the time from channels. I call it the nose shot, where you look up and look at the boogers and the nose hairs. Why do we see this all the time? People walking down the street and we're just looking at the sky, right? I have a theory. My theory is that people are a little uncomfortable letting the world know they're filming, so they keep it way down here, away from everything, you know, and just kind of keep it secret like that. Nobody likes this shot, guys. We don't see any nature. All we see is nose hairs, boogers, and the sky. Bring that camera up and concentrate on keeping that camera at your eye level all the time. Everything you film. I don't care how stupid you think you feel with your arm up out like this. Keep that camera at eye level all the time. You get to see more of the view behind you. It's a more pleasant appearance. You feel like you're connected to the person that you're watching on YouTube. And it just helps the video get a lot more character. It keeps it level with the horizon in the background and it's a much more pleasant view. So the number one thing I can teach you is keep the camera lens at eye level all the time while you're shooting. All right, we gotta talk about this one, the camera shake. Camera shake in a YouTube video can make it so that people don't even wanna watch the video anymore. They will turn it off as soon as they start getting seasick because there's too much camera shake. Why does this happen and how can we fix this? There are four different ways to fix shaky video. Four different things you can do. Try one of these. First of all, get a camera with some image stabilization. Like the GoPro Hero 6, it has fantastic five axis image stabilization built into the camera. If that's not enough, you can also digitally stabilize that video in post-production when you get there. I do that on Adobe Premiere a few times, do some warp stabilization in post-production. But yeah, there are lots of cameras out being made today uh, that have some fantastic built-in image stabilization. Another easy thing you can do to fix it is a lot of people keep their arm perfectly straight when they film, which creates a lot more shake with the camera. The reason for this is anytime you have a longer extended pole, over here it's not shaking that much over, over by my shoulder. It's not doing a whole lot, but at the very end of that pole, you're gonna have a lot more shake out here. So one of the easiest things you can do is bend that arm. Use it as a sort of shock absorber for the camera. That way you can constantly keep, as you're walking, with that bend, you're gonna keep the end a little more stable as you walk. Always keep that bent. Plus it makes it so that your arm isn't always gonna be in the shot as much. So keep it bent, but don't keep it stiff. Keep it very flexible there in the bend as you're walking around. Another really easy thing you can do is don't handheld film. Don't just hold the camera in your hand and do this kind of stuff. 
put your camera on a tripod. Put your camera in some kind of um, a hand grip case, and I'll show you what I've got here. This is my uh, go-to setup for discreet filming when I don't want to use my big Canon camera with the big fluffy microphone, is my GoPro setup here, which is on a tripod up here, so that I can set that down on the ground somewhere. This aluminum case was like 15 bucks. It says Hero 5 on it, but it's a six. 15 bucks on eBay, and uh, it gives me a lot more control. You won't see the tip of my hand in the shot holding the camera all the time, and it keeps my arm a little lower than the camera like that. Also, it's great for if you want to set it on the table and shoot something so that the camera is not just sitting on the table, but getting some type of tripod or a hand grip is another easy way to stabilize the video. And the fourth thing you can do is also, again, really easy. Uh, a lot of vloggers that travel, we like to talk and walk. That's just what we do. But as you can see, it can get very unstable. So how about you just stop when you want to talk? How about that? Walk to where you're going to get to go. And once you get there, plant your feet and film. <laughs> Easy enough, right? Why do we always have to move and film at the same time? We don't. I can still share this with you. Works just fine. So there you go. Four easy ways to help stabilize your video. Number three on my list of how to make better YouTube videos is, where is the sun or the indoor light source? It's kind of a common shot we see on YouTube all the time, right? It's not very pleasant to watch because you're just staring at the sun and I'm much darker and it's harder to see a lot of detail. But the reason why this shot is so common for YouTubers is because it's very comfortable for me to shoot like this. The sun is behind me, it lights up everything, I'm not squinting at all, it doesn't bother me to film this way, and this is the most comfortable way to film. Unfortunately, it's the worst viewing angle for someone to watch. As opposed to, if I rotate around, and get the sunshine on me, and most importantly, the sunshine behind the camera lens. That's right. This is the most dynamic shot, this is the clearest shot you can get, and this is where you get the most vibrant colors, is when the sun is behind the camera. So, tip number three is, know where your light source is all the time. There's a couple ways you can remember this. First of all, if you're not blinded by some, some type of indoor light or the sun, then you're not gonna have a great shot, okay? So if I'm walking around and all of a sudden I think, wait a minute, there's no sun in my eyes, that means the sun is on the lens. Oh, okay. As a vlogger, I know it sounds counterproductive, but you want to be blinded all the time. You always want that sun on the subject that you're capturing. So. The sun needs to always be behind the camera and in your eyes. It can kind of be in the middle on one of the sides, that's okay, but you never want it to be more on the lens than on your face. So, and this works for interior lights too, we'll go inside. Again, same thing if we turn around this way. The lights are all behind me facing the camera, that is bad. Turn around, have all of those lights on me and behind the camera, cool? So start thinking about that in your videography. Start making sure that that sun is both in your eyes and behind the camera lens, on the opposite side of the camera lens. Cool. Number four is the, we'll call it the, the bad panning or the, oh, look at this rock problem with filming YouTube videos. It is a very overlooked issue that a lot of people have with filming YouTube videos. There's something in our mind where we think the world sees it only through our eyes and the camera doesn't matter. Let me just reproduce this real quick. Well, I'm just walking through here in the, oh my gosh, look at this. You guys see this weird bush? Was that weird or what? I really like this bush. In fact, this bush, this might even be the same bush. <laughs> Sorry, not trying to make you guys sick there, but, but we see that all the time. You know, we get really excited as a video creator and we don't think about what it's like for somebody on the other side. Just like if you're a passenger in a vehicle, the driver is in control of the steering and the brakes and he's not thinking that the passenger might get car sick from doing all these maneuvers. He doesn't know what you're about to do or what you're about to show. You know, so I can't just be talking and then be like, oh my gosh, squirrel, look. <laughs> it's, it's really, really un unpleasant. So. 
along with this, we also have the panning thing that happens. And that's when people are showing something and they pan too fast because they get so excited. They just want to show you all this stuff. I mean, look at the RV. Look at these mountains over here. I mean, look again, look at my RV and look at these mountains over here. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but we don't, we don't think about the viewer oftentimes when it comes to panning. Just slow down. Take your time with those pans. What I often do is if I see something like if I want to talk about that tree right there, I'm going to stop, take my time, turn the camera around, and I'm going to edit out that part where I turned. But if you don't have time to do that, there's a very easy way to do it. Just slow down and use a second hand. For instance, this is a beautiful spot. Whoa, look at this tree. I'm going to grab the camera with my other hand to help stabilize it while I turn it. And I'm going to keep talking while I slowly turn the camera. There's no need to do this quickly. This shrub, I don't know how long this shrub has been here, but it's just beautiful, isn't it? Actually, it's really not. It's kind of an ugly shrub. And again, slowly back to myself, put this hand back on and take this one away. See how much easier that was? To, to see, to, to visually enjoy on YouTube. It's a small thing and it's really, really tough to learn this one down. It really is. We always, I even still pan too quickly and turn the camera around too fast. I'm gonna show you one more time. Oh, look at this cool fence over here, you guys. I don't know how long this fence has really been here, but it is definitely keeping cows off the road, isn't it? And there's also a cattle guard over there, but it's really nice. As opposed to Oh, they put in a big fence over here for the cows to keep the cows off the road. Eh, I'm sure that probably works. I don't know how well that... Uh, ex again, exaggerating a little bit here, but practice slow pans, okay? In fact, even while you're talking, if you want to move around and show stuff, plant your feet, twist at your waist, and do it slow. We're in the sun there. Another technique I'll use is just to twist my wrist well, I'm going to show you that fence and it looks something like this. Again, I'm just doing it really slow, but I want you to see that fence. And then I'm going to bring you guys right back slowly. That was probably too fast, actually. We are all guilty of this, but step four, practice slow pans and be very, very careful when you're pointing out stuff, guys. Just be nice. If somebody starts to get seasick watching your video, it doesn't matter if it's a fantastic 10 minute beautiful video. The second you start jerking that camera around or doing your pans too fast, people click away because it's unpleasant to watch. It doesn't matter how good the rest of your video is. And lastly, let's talk about the most neglected part of video. Audio. Technically is the exact opposite of video, but guess what? The best video in the world can be absolutely garbage with bad audio. And by bad audio, I mean audio that is not captured well, audio that has too many ambient sounds going on, or the infamous audio ruined by wind. You guys have seen this guy on here uh, on me for a while now. Uh, this is a dead cat muff on a lapel microphone. This is a purple panda uh, wired lapel microphone. I put this into the adapter for the GoPro 6 and then plug it in. And this way I do not have to sync audio separately from my Sony, Sony recorder device. If it's possible, guys, get a microphone, get it close to the source, your mouth, and put a dead cat windproof muff on it so that it doesn't ruin your audio. There's nothing worse than spending a whole day out in the wilderness thinking you captured the most amazing stuff and then you get back and it's just ruined. It's just ruined by wind. It's literally ruined. I don't even want to upload this to YouTube. It's so bad. And we don't want to watch it either. We don't want to watch your video that has horrible sound. So. If you don't want to do the lapel microphone, there are some other options. Again, we're strictly talking about action cameras and phones. So if you have a big DSLR, you can actually put a big shotgun microphone up there, which will work too. But you can go on eBay, you can buy what's called a Rycote mic over, mic over, over. I think mic over. Anyway, it's a piece of adhesive that you put on the microphone of your source, whether that's your action camera or your smartphone. After the adhesive is on, then you put a wind muff like this right on the camera. That way when the wind hits the camera, it's gonna protect your sound. It can work. I've seen where it doesn't work as well on smartphones, 
but the best alternative you can have is to plug in a wired lavalier microphone with a dead cat uh, windscreen right here for your videos. Again, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope you can take some of these tips and incorporate them into your very next video. I'm really excited to hear about how this helped you guys. So let me know in the comments below if you've had some success with any of my five quick tips here. And remember, if you're interested in the Don't Be a Tater Hater t-shirt, hoodie, or sweater, link below to Bonfire. Order yours today, limited quantity. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in a couple days back on the Lincoln Highway. Bye-bye.